Trenchant Holdings, not many people know the name, but millions of Africans can identify with the brands Techno and Infinix, two of the biggest smartphone brands by sale in Africa. They've also got a third mobile brand called Itel, a digital accessories brand called Rimo, an appliances brand called Tynix, and they also have an after sales service brand called Cow Care. Now, Transion is huge in Africa, and they've essentially dominated the smartphone market here. But how did they do it? Before we dive in, hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel and turning notifications on. You may not know it, but Transient Holdings is relatively young as a company. Founded as Transient Technology in Hong Kong in 2006, they set up shop in Africa in 2008 with the Techno and Itel brands, which were initially feature phones, meaning these were Java phones. We came with scarcely known features back then, like um, dual SIM slots, very large batteries, TV capabilities, and others. So in 2014, Transient released its first smartphone in the African market, and they had a very simple strategy tailoring their phone's features to meet the needs of the African market. But to do this, they had to understand some of the basic challenges a lot of people in Africa face, which is mainly low spending power. Having this in mind, Transfer focused on releasing phones that had the basic features that people needed at a really affordable rate. And this formula worked like a charm. Before you knew it, their fan base started growing with avid supporters on opposing sides of both their brands Techno and Infinix. Otherwise, most of these supporters not knowing that both phones were sub-brands of the same company. This rivalry actually still stands till today. So back to how they did it. In the past, Samsung and Nokia were the mainstream brands in Africa, but their phone specifications were standardized across all markets. But Transition defied that by rolling out products and features that addressed Africans' pain points, thereby distinguishing their brands from the rest. Some of the features tailored to the African market included one, nighttime photography settings designed for darker skin tones, to the introduction of multiple SIM card slots for users to toggle between wireless networks in order to save money. Three, it gets really hot and humid in Africa sometimes, so heat protection for the electronic devices was also introduced. Four, cell phones that had large battery capacity. Now, in Nigeria, South Africa, and Ethiopia, for example, the power supply can be unreliable, leaving people unable to charge their phones for long hours. So introducing a large battery that could last two days on a single charge was very welcome. Five, price. This was also another point that the Transient team tackled. Back in 2007 through to 2012, feature phones from the Techno brand sold for as low as 4,000 Naira, which was only $33 back then. These strategies won over African consumers, and in 2018, Transient commanded nearly 50% share of handsets shipped to the African continent. Do you know what that means? That's absolutely bonkers. 50%. Samsung was number two at a distant 10%, while HMD Global, which owns Nokia, was third at 7%. This phenomenal performance by Transion has now given other brands insights to how lucrative the African smartphone market is. And since 2018 till date, we've seen other smartphone brands like Xiaomi, Yumi DG, Oppo, and Huawei return or set up shop in Africa. Today, the competition is rife, and there's a real struggle for market share. Samsung has upped its game by introducing the Budget M series and the sub-flagship A series smartphones. Xiaomi, on the other hand, releases phones that are quite almost impossible to beat when you consider their spec to price ratio. Gioni is also fighting for the same market demographic as Transion's Itel, Techno, and Infinix brands. So Transion actually gained dominance by discovering the potential of Africa at a very, very early stage and has since invested a lot of effort in this market. This long-term commitment and know-how is practically very hard to surpass by other brands, but not impossible. As a result of the growing competition, Transion has begun moving into other new territories, including Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and most of the Southeast Asia region, essentially repeating the same strategies that did it for them here in Africa. However, Africa still accounts for 80% of the bulk of Transion's total annual revenue. So of late, a younger, more informed demographic of smartphone buyers are emerging and there's an anti-Infinix and anti-Techno following growing in the region. Their complaints mainly are on Techno's and Infinix's refusal to introduce newer components in their smartphones. For instance, in May of 2020, Infinix released the Note 7 
which was a decent phone by all accounts, but was trashed for its use of a micro USB port in 2020. Techno also released the Camon 15 Premier recently and got a lot of backlash for using the two-year-old processor, which was the Helio P35, and also having a micro USB port and having a much higher price tag than they were used to. There were also complaints about the bloatware found in both the Techno and Infinix phones. Now, with regards to the higher price tags of transient phones in 2020, there really is nothing the company can do to reduce um, the prices of their phone. They've got workers to pay one. They have to maintain an R&D department too. And introducing newer components mean that the manufacturing costs go up, which will in turn affect the retail price of these devices. So in their original strategy of releasing phones that Africans can afford, they found themselves between the devil and the blue sea. Do they use newer components and increase the price tags of their phones or do they use older components and uh, make the phone relatively affordable? You can see how this becomes a real challenge for the company. A better economy and exchange rates will be really helpful to the company in this regard or the willingness of the people in the region to spend more for better specs. However, with the competition from other brands and with more brands gearing up to visit the sub-Saharan African region, I think Transition can still salvage its spot as the number one phone maker and seller on the continent. They really just need to start listening and taking feedbacks from the growing number of their educated and exposed customers. One, cut down on bloatware. Two, guarantee at least one major software upgrade and introduce newer components. Will this help keep Transition on the throne? I don't know. Only time will tell. Guys, if you like this video and more, more like this, consider subscribing to my channel and turning notifications on. It'll also be a huge boost if you could hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Comments and questions are always welcome and you can follow me at Henry Neo on social media to keep the discussions going on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.